Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Up Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. And then at the end, we will identify one powerful how, one action that he can take for results in the next 30 days. Today, I'm so excited to welcome Jim Chester. Jim, I consider you a friend at this point. We've talked about podcasting so much. And Jim, you host Cairo Hustle. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to uh, sharing some information and some takeaways for the listeners today. Awesome. I appreciate that, Jim. Well, Cairo Hustle has released 248 episodes. Now, not only have they released 248 episodes, official podcast episodes out in the world, but they've done over 900 interviews since 2017. So Jim definitely knows what he's doing and they've done, um, they are the number one, Cairo Hustle is the number one chiropractic podcast. And uh, the host again is Jim Chester. He protects free speech and chiropractic while focusing on his guest stories, brand and genius. You know, um, Jim, we've talked a lot about your vision and what you're doing and I just love it. Can you just briefly tell us why did you start Cairo Hustle? I wanted to add more value to an underserved market where I knew enough about the profession because we'd done a documentary back in 2016 on chiropractic. And our ambition was to create another documentary in 2019. So I said, what can I do to sandwich value in between film one and film two? So I came into podcasting with a filmmaker's background and I came into podcasting with a journalistic background. So podcasting was uh, really fun for me because I could uh, add more value and if I could get more stories out there about something that I was passionate about, it created a good, um, a good network for me. And I think a lot of times when people create podcasts, they don't realize what they're doing. I mean, they, they think that they're going to create a solo cast or they think that they're going to create an interview like a uh, show, but no one's really clear on what they really want, why they're doing it. So I think that this conversation with you and I today is going to reveal a lot of that for people. Mm, I love that. Well, and two, before we go too much further, if you're watching us on video, you are seeing this as it plays out. If you're listening, I just want to say we I'm looking at Jim right now on video and he has a background with his next project. So we're going to today be focusing on Cairo Hustle and how to optimize that. But Jim, for a minute, how about if you just share briefly about your upcoming project that you're working on? So, yeah, I always created Cairo Hustle as the producer and i really didn't take my audience into consideration when i started that that brand um, i created content for me um, the actual interviewer and i'm sure a lot of people do that too but as i got more into doing the interviews for cairo hustle i was like well what if i upstart something new and i focus on the average commute time and i actually take the person on the end as the avatar the listener, um, wouldn't that be awesome? So I'm not creating some three hour show like Joe Rogan, which I've listened to his stuff. And I'm not creating a 45 minute to an hour show like Cairo Hustle, which I listen to my own stuff. But I'm like, well, what if I can really get granular? What if I can really put a cap and get a show between 16 to 20 minutes long and create it for the end user? Which in my opinion, what I'm wor really working on is getting people to use our content and actually listen to the whole segment rather than dipping in and dipping out. And just, I want people to consume what we're doing. So if I wanted to create something for the end user, that's why we're creating this new podcast because I really wanna see what the metrics will do when I keep the times down. Mm. And I really want people to listen to the whole thing so they can get the full content out of what we, what we created. And I feel like a lot of times when people create podcasts, the runtime of those isn't as great as the producer wants it to be, just because I think that the time of creation is too long for the end user to commit to. Mm. And the new show is called Influencer Authority. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and, and you're working, it, your target audience, that is uh, content creators, isn't that correct? Well, 
you know, I think content creators is one avenue of it, but I want people that are creating movements. Mm. I want people that are writing books. I want people that are making films. I want people that have social followings. Um, I want people that are keynote speakers. I want people that are up and comers. I want the hungry young people right out of the gates that are saying, I'm going to go do it. So I'm looking at a diverse group. Actually, I didn't even know that I was going to start this show. And I didn't know I was going to go meet John Lee Dumas um, a couple weekends ago in Puerto Rico. Uh, but when I met him, I was reinvigorated to even go harder with this show because I realized uh, his format was something of genius. And if I could model one of the best podcasters in the world after being a successful podcaster, I was like, yeah, why wouldn't I do it like that? He talked to the smartest movers and shakers of the world. And that's really when I came into the podcast world, I was listening to I Love Marketing by Dean Jackson and Joe Polish. And I fell in love with those guys. Mm. And I was like, these guys are talking to the smartest people in the world. Yeah. And I guess for me to transition out of the chiropractic space, to more of a mainstream space, I think that we'll get a lot of buy-in because we've already created something really amazing. And now I can harvest that collection of healers and chiropractors for the show. But I'm also asking people at the end of it, can you recommend me two people to interview? Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that that's a really cool strategy is to in interview the influencers and the authorities and say, hey, by the way, I love you. Can you introduce me to two people that would be great guests for the show? Yeah, I think that's great. Well, that's exciting. And I am really looking forward to seeing how that plays out uh, with the incredible success that you've seen with Cairo Hustle. One thing that really impressed me, we talked before this interview about the fact that um, we're, you know, today we're going to focus on Cairo Hustle. How do you grow the show? And I was kind of questioning it going, oh my gosh, Jim, you have so much success. You're trying to grow your show. And you're like, yes, that's what I want. I want to keep growing it. So I'm super impressed. I'm always um, just really impressed by you and the fact that you're just always growing and uh, just anyone out there listening it one thing you know if you if you don't know who john lee dumas is then push pause on your podcasting and go <laughs> learn about him because he is a pioneer and definitely knows a lot about that so that is incredible and with cairo hustle when it, you know before we start i give the option of like let's do you want to talk about monetization or do you want to talk about audience growth and you said you want to talk about audience growth so what we're going to do is we'll go through I've got some questions for you and to start a conversation about the why of your show, uh, Cairo Hustle, who you're talking to, who your audience is, and what it is that you're already doing. And then we'll transition into a discussion about like what I think you're just doing amazingly, which there's a lot of things. Uh, and as you're listening, you know, listeners out there, as you're listening, you're going to discover that, um, you know, a lot of these episodes, we're talking about the same things because you know, if, if you're not doing very much with your show, there's always the first few things I'm like, do these before you do anything else. The beauty of this interview is you're going to find that there's so much that Jim's already doing well, that it's really going to be about leveraging that and like what it, even a small change uh, that can be made to help improve it. And, um, and I told Jim this before, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm like, okay, so you talked to John Lee Dumas last week, you know, two weeks ago. So, so I will do my best, but, um, but I am really excited to talk to you about this and hopefully be talking with you soon about your new show as well. Sound good? Is that yeah, absolutely. excited? Are you ready to go? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Well, let's again, let's start with your why. You, we talked a little bit about this. Like, why did you start? Uh, I asked you before the interview what it is that you want from your show, Cairo Hustle. And you said it is to that you wanted to gain exposure, you wanted to build relationships. And let's be honest, those backlinks don't hurt um, either. Can you expand on that a little bit and tell me why those things are important? Well, as I got into creating interviews for other people, um, I realized that if I wanted to create a bigger impact, I had to get on more people's shows. And as you become a mature podcaster, you have to realize that your ecosystem is awesome, but if you don't market your ecosystem, then it doesn't grow. So I wanted, my initiative is to get on 20 other people's interviews a month going forward. 
because I want to be able to rebrand and remarket to other audiences. And that's kind of the, you know, some of the strategy behind our first podcast was I was like, look, if I can just start, we did a women's month. Okay. And I'm like, I'm going to pick, actually we ran for three months. And at that time we were a, a, a weekly show. Now we are, now we're a twice a week show and I might go every day. So, um, but because of that, I was like, well, how can I get more exposure for a brand that's, um, you know, my homemade thing. And I was like, well, if my homemade thing is really good in my little ecosystem and I have, you know, a lot of people that know us inside the chiropractic space, well, how can I get chiropractic more mainstream into all these other ecosystems? Well, if I can be a spokesperson as the interviewer and I can start becoming the inter being interviewed, then I can start matriculating this idea of chiropractic to all these other subgenre groups that are really excited about their one thing. Well, my one thing is chiropractic. So if I can take somebody that's a leader of a movement and I can influence them with chiropractic and impassion them to take care of their nervous system and their healthy habits, then I'm doing my group a huge service and not just speaking to the echo chamber of my audience, which is already drinking the Kool-Aid. Right. So I was looking, how can I transition me as the charismatic leader of my movement into becoming somebody that can start connecting the dots with all the other creators in the world to understand chiropractic better. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you really set out to be an advocate for chiropractic because it's something that you discovered for your own self. I mean, I just want to reiterate, I mean, you're not a chiropractor, you're a no. journalist, you're a producer. And so you, you came into this industry, became passionate about it. You're like, everybody should know about it. And so, um, so being an advocate sounds like a big why for you. Is that true? Yeah. You know, actually I was uh advocate of the year. Um, I think it was 2017 and 2018 and they quit giving the award after I went two years in a, a row, <laughs> but I, I, I won, I won advocate of the year award, not being a chiropractor. And I just believe that everybody, um, should have a healthy nervous system and chiropractors are the leaders to keeping bodies healthy without the drug it out, cut it out, burn it out methods. And they let the body heal naturally the way it's supposed to. And I fell in love with that. I fell in love with their philosophy. I fell in love with that they were kind of uh, um, fringe healers that weren't accepted in mainstream because the American Medical Association tried to rub out chiropractic. And I, I started researching the, the history of the profession when we made our first film. And I realized that there was a big story behind it. And if somebody wants to like stifle the healing art, which is chiropractic, being the American Medical Association, there has to be a big story around that. Mm. So I started to just peel back the layers and I realized that there was a very marginalized approach to basically push chiropractic out because there's no money in keeping people healthy. Mm. And I was like, well, what if I can become an advocate for something that I believe will take over and will become the point of entry? I still believe that. I still believe that one day chiropractic will be the point of entry to all health matters. And then they will become the referral hub because people are at their wits end of what's going on in our current culture when it comes to who to go to or who to trust within the medical arena. Mm -hmm. People just don't know that chiropractors are the answer. And that's my big why is if I can prove through my work of consistency that chiropractic is something to keep people healthy, it's safe, it's affordable, and it's effective. And it's just like going to the dentist. Why would you go to the dentist once and never go again? It doesn't make sense. I have so, to say, I enjoy the chiropractor far more than I enjoy a dentist. <laughs> Nothing against dentists. You guys are awesome. But, <laughs> but back to the story is like people yeah. think that they have to go to the chiropractor one time and it's like game over. Right. And that's when it's game on. And that's when you don't have to do it. You get to do it. Right. And right. I believe a, a longevity of mobility and capability and strength and conditioning and health is something that all people want. Yeah. They just don't know where to go for it. 
You know, and I, that's so true. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I was so, I gravitated to your, you know, your podcast, what you're doing. Um, and, and one of the things that I do think you do extremely well is you have a strong why. And it is be, you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, I want a podcast because I want to help people. Well, you're like, you're like inside out. You're like, look, this changed my life. I want to change every, I want everybody's life to change like this. And, you know, as soon as we connected and I started seeing the content that you're putting out, you had this, you know, consistent podcast, but you also had like a lifestyle around the podcast. So, you know, you're making smoothies, you're living healthy you're you know, climbing mountains. And so every time you're like, like living, breathing, walking on brand all the time. So I, I just think that that's, that has to have a huge part in why your podcast has grown in addition to the fact that you're, that you're helping um, that your, you know, your whole point is bringing on chiropractors and now you help chiropractors too. Is that, is that true? Like what, what is it that you do for a living beyond podcasting? Is that, yeah, like, I, you know, I, I, that's a terrible way to, that was like, no, the no, worst no, it's good. It's good. Asked. It's good. But, but like, are they your clients? How, how do you work beyond, like, is the podcast your full-time job or do you do other things that the podcast supports? That maybe well, that's a better way it's, to ask. It's, it's a really interesting question. And I think I have a really good answer for that. Um, when I got into podcasting, um, it was more, how can I create more value in this market? And I had a pretty awesome gig. I would go out to state fairs and county fairs and health expos and women's expos and farmers markets. And I would go out, I'd be the guy in the 10 by 10 booth that would say, hey, who's looking for a good chiropractor? And I would schedule people in for care. And I was basically a hired marketer. People would hire me for their private practice and I'd go out and I'd figure out how to harvest them new patients, which I absolutely loved. I'm still, I still love it. And I still consider myself the greatest chiropractic salesman on planet earth. Like there's no one better. So that's what I really loved. And then we had this huge scamdemic hit us where the world thought that like everybody's like sick and like the world's falling apart. And I was like, I don't believe all this. Actually, the day that that happened, I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, working, doing one of these events. And they're like, um, yeah, the governor's closing down the state. I'm like, so what? I'm here to save people's lives. I'm here to... Um, save people from drugs and surgery. Like, that's what I'm doing here. Like, if that's what we're afraid of a virus, then I need to stay here. I need to keep on working. So starting out the podcast and I'm in this elite men's group. And when I, when it didn't really register with me what I was doing, but my coach was like, dude, your podcast is a hobby job. I'm like, screw you, bro. I'm like, hobby job. I'm like, I pay my, my bills with my podcast. I'm like, I have a movement, dude. I'm like, hobby job. So I was really off put, but um, now fast forward, um, when the world shut down and it was all confused, um, me and my team created a, a, an advertising agency called Digital Hustle. So we specialize in weight loss. So we picked our exact avatar which is a chiropractor that has been practicing and has maybe a sore shoulder or a sore back and wants another stream of income without the golden handcuffs of adjusting over the table all day. And we said, how can we create an income stream for that avatar? So we started connecting with other chiropractors and one of our Men of Iron Brothers, that's the elite men's group I'm in. We said, hey, Dr. Gareth, what are you doing? He's like, oh, well, I'm doing this and this. And by the way, I got screwed over royally by these two ad agencies. And I was like, huh, well, what if we made one with integrity? And I took my skill sets of chiropractic salesmanship and we took your skill sets of running a successful weight loss practice and we married those together. And we have a traffic source now with our podcast. How can we create a business to help more chiropractors just like you? So... Long story, I know that you asked me like to open the side door, but between being a chiropractic sales rep, between being a podcast creator, and then realizing that the level two was creating a business when the world got shut down. And if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't have done that, Tiffany, 
I would be the guy outside of Walmart saying, hi, my name is Jim Chester. I'm a nice guy. Give me some money. Wow. Because I lost all of my income when it came to 2020. Mm. And if it wasn't for my hobby job propping me up, I wouldn't have had much of a purpose mm. because all of my job canceled. Cancel culture. Yep. It canceled all of my work. Wow. So yeah, the hobby job kept me floating. Wow. That's cool. And it just shows, I mean, podcasts are legit for sure. <laughs> so, well, so that's awesome. So when it comes to your podcast, Cairo Hustle, who is your target audience? Who is the ideal listener or, or viewer? Well, to be honest, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know who it would be. I, I had a lot of ideas. I'm like, well, we're, we're going to go mainstream. We're going to break through the chiropractic noise and we're going to go right to like everybody's iPods. And I was like, well, um, I really believe it's not only the practitioners, which is the echo chamber I talked about earlier breaking out of, but the practitioners are listening. And here's the cool thing is their patient bases are listening to them because they're their heroes mm -hmm. and their friends and family are listening because that's the doctor. So I've leveraged that one individual, which is the doctor, the influencer, but I realized that his audience or her audience was not only their patients, but their family. Mm -hmm. And when you start to add value to that celebrated person, now you're starting to hit these small pockets of influence. And I've always said, like, if I can get one mom to listen to one show to make a change in one family because I did one thing, now we're actually changing a family. Because mm -hmm. people might not know this, but from my research and the circles I run in, the woman is the decision maker for the family. So if she says, I started practicing a chiropractic lifestyle. I started eating well, I started thinking better, I started getting adjusted, I started drinking more water, I started stretching more, I started tracking my sleep, and by the way, I get adjusted, and I go to this chiropractor. That's going to create a downstream effect on that family. Mm -hmm, for sure. So my audience, number one, was probably the chiropractor. But what I've realized is now we're starting to get more of a reach to more audiences. And that's why I know that with our movement going forward, I have to become a bigger charismatic leader for the chiropractic movement. Because if the people that you're interviewing consistently don't know about the chiropractic lifestyle, I need to be on their show. Right, right. So, and that's, I think that's a really good point because the whole idea of having a target audience that you're creating a show for, because that's really what we're doing. We're promising a group of people to deliver to them every week. And if we don't really know who that is, it's pretty tough to make good content now. And exactly what you said was true, where you're creating it for one group. However, other groups are listening. It's just really important to really understand who you're talking to, because, um, you know, in marketing, they always say, if you talk to everybody you're talking to nobody. So really understanding who it is you're talking to is so important. So you would say that your target, your, your ideal listener is our chiropractors. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, to, to, to take an easy road. Yes. The chiropractors uh, <laughs> that, that, that's our, our, our avatar. Primary. Okay. Yes. <laughs> there are secondaries, but if you had to pick a primary it'd be them. So on your show, if they were, I call this the audience promise. Do you have an audience promise where you're like, Hey, if you listen to the show every week or, you know, twice a week now, and this is the transformation that you're going to see. So, because a lot of times what happens is as podcasters, we get people to our show and then the people are listening and it's entertaining, but they won't become loyal followers unless they're like, they get it, that there's something in it for them, that there's some transformation. Is there a transformation that you can see for chiropractors if they were to listen to your show over time? Well, philosophically um, based um, in chiropractic, they call it protecting the sacred trust. So when we created the tenets of our show, it was to protect free speech in the profession. So any time and every time people know that's going to be non-watered down content 
when it comes to protecting the free speech and the historical resonance of the profession. So anybody that listens to it, it's like those guys are on fire and they don't back down. And they might have an alpha aggression to the tone, but there has to be that, otherwise people manipulate. So I had to stand up very proud for knowing that from day one, we are gonna protect free speech and chiropractic and we weren't going to call it chiropractic medicine. And we weren't going to take out historical contexts like universal intelligence, innate intelligence and subluxation. So we stood true to our word from day one. And I think that that's why we have such an impassioned listener base is because that is the promise. And it's in our charter, like we protect free speech and chiropractic. And I think that when people knew that, that we stood for something, that allowed them to buy into us. Okay. Do you imagine that there's a, like, um, I feel like that's, um, so we're talking kind of about a loyalty building. So as they're listening, it's going to resonate. It's something that they too have to battle for. And so therefore they feel like, yeah, I want to be part of this. Is that the draw? Are you feeling the? Yeah. I, you know, when it comes down to tribe building, I think everybody has their own like, you know, specialty. And when I got into like the hobby job of podcasting, um, I didn't realize that we were building a passionate tribe. And I didn't realize that I had to give a deliverable to them. I was just gonna outwork everybody in the space. And I was gonna put out more content and more episodes than anybody in the space. So I was gonna become the number one eventually and chiropractic with producing out producing people. So that's another promise is mm -hmm. that we just will out produce everybody. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's kind of like a hard headed way of approach, but that's who the charismatic leader is, is I'm just a hard headed dude from Iowa that said, I'm just going to outwork everybody. Well, and two, one of the reasons that I like what I do is that it's all about leveraging that. So like, if you're super strong in this, but it's like, what if you made one little mill millimeter of a change and then suddenly you got like, now it's like, yes, you dominate in this space. But what if you brought in people who didn't know about this whole secret handshake? You know, what if they didn't know that, but suddenly, but like when you tell me that, and I get it because we've been into chiro, you know, like we've, I've gone to chiropractors, our friends were chiropractors. So I love what you're doing, but I would never have known all that language that you were using. But if you had some kind of promise, like, you know, um, you know, if you're a chiropractor and you know, we're protecting our ability to do that. A lot of people, it's going to resonate with a lot of people. So even if they're going to the chiropractor and listening because of that, they're going to be like, oh, I'm on board. And the chiropractor who maybe is, um, you know, younger and they're not aware of it, suddenly you made a tiny little change and then you suddenly more people know what you're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I share a real truth with people? Yeah. I can do better. And the reason I haven't done better is because I haven't figured out how to turn the interviews that I've done into customers. Mm. So I have a gold mine that I've been doing a goodwill campaign on for a long time, but I haven't learned how to turn those 900 people I've interviewed into customers. So my next strategy is to take that gold mine and that nurturing campaign, that goodwill path that I've been on and figure out how to convert those people I built relationships with over the past three to four years and turn those into customers for our ad agency. Gotcha. So I've really lagged on conversion, but I've done a really great job of building preeminence mm -hmm. and doing uh, benevolence. But yeah. I've done a poor job of converting and turning people that I've made touch lives with into customers. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, um, I, I you know, I, I actually, I can feel myself wanting to talk about that more, but I, I want to be really, uh, respectful of your time. I know we just have a little bit of time left. Um, so th that has to do with monetization and 1000%. I could talk about that for like two hours right now, <laughs> but we'll have to save that as, as much as it's taking every bit of my effort to hold back. But, um, so, one thing I love, you know, we can all improve. And so even, even this conversation today, I, 
I love that already I can see opportunities where you're, you could do something simply and still stay because you are, you are driving a freight train down the track right now. And so to think like, oh, I need to do, you know, you, you can't pick like four things that you're going to improve. You know, you need to grab one, improve it really well and use that as an upgraded fuel for your freight train. You know, I mean, that's all we're looking for um, right now in my perspective right now. So I think, you know, again, you're doing a lot of things really, really well. So um, now let's see here. So we talked about your why, which is super strong. We talked about your who, um, and just real quick. Oh gosh, I have like three questions I want to ask you, but I feel like it's just going to add so much time and I just want to condense it. Um, first, I just want to say out loud, like you've had great, uh, interviews with people, uh, like Grant Cardone, for example, <laughs> and you're meeting really great influencers in this. So I think that that's amazing, but I'm going to bypass that because I really want to get to the meat of, of making that, what is that small change? Um, one question I do want to ask, what do you do right now to kind of evaluate whether your content is resonating or if you want to make adjustments to the content based on feedback or engagement from your listeners or viewers? So two things, and thank you for asking that. Yeah. Um, first things first, um, I did my own analysis and me being the creator and the producer, I was like, start, I started listening to more podcasts and I'm like, if I like this and they're doing this, maybe I should do that. So I made a new intro, which I like better. Um, we were running from 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm like, nope, we're going to cut this down to 30 minutes. So once again, I took my end user into consideration. So I took a show that I was running 45 minutes to an hour, now down to 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes uh, max. So I'm cutting down my runtime, which I felt like would be more user friendly to the end user. And I was like, where is the fastest growing sector? of chiropractic and I said huh they're Spanish speaking mm. so right now we're in the early stages of releasing Cairo Hustle Espanol so we'll be the first bilingual show um, that will be featuring Spanish speaking chiropractors for a Spanish speaking audience so I looked to how could I condense time down and we, rework we re reworked the question set that we ask people and made a shorter show. And then I was like, well, how can I get into another vertical? Mm -hmm. One that's growing faster. And that's so you, the Spanish speaking chiropractors. So you looked out, you looked for external cape, you know, performance indicators and then applied it to yours. You're like, what's working for other groups or where is everybody flocking to and how can we apply that? So how do you measure whether you're expanding your own audience? Oh. Huh. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to go twice a week and release twice a week is I knew that we were getting about 15,000 listens an episode. So if I could double that, that means that I'm getting 30,000 listeners a month or a week. And if I could do that times four, I'm not a mathlete, but I can tell you that those numbers are pretty impressive. So if I were to go to a daily, you can just imagine the impact that we're making now. So, mm -hmm. so I don't you know. Check your, you check your downloads then from the stats that you probably get from your host, or do you use an external, mm -hmm. but it's download listens type. Most all that traffic to our website. Okay, cool. Like I, 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 I leverage little from other external like platforms. Everything that I'm telling you is like traffic to the website. Oh, okay. So the, so, so that 15 K is that how many, like, where, what does that number? That, that, that's coming from visitors and unique visitors. Um, every episode, unique visitors to your website or yes. Okay. Yep. I love it. That's so helpful to know. In fact, it's awesome because I'm always telling everybody, you know, have a blog, you know, the SEO is like the number one thing you could possibly do that you, and you have so much control over it. So the, the fact that you're getting those 15,000 uniques is just incredible. So um, let's talk a little bit. That's really helpful on the, the who and all that. Let's talk a little bit about what's already working 
number one, it sounds like your website's working incredibly. Would you, can you just briefly tell me like one thing that you would say is the number one way that you've been able to grow your, your, um, I, I don't even want to call it a show. I feel like it's a movement. <laughs> like what, what would you say is the one thing that's worked for you? Um, becoming omnipresent and all of the groups in the chiropractic space. Oh, I love it. Showing up to seminars, um, meeting people in person, actually doing man on the street style interviews at these big seminars. Um, I'll actually leave tomorrow to uh, Atlantic City where I'll be at the Genesis Pediatric Conference where I'll be doing, I'll be speaking there, but I'll also be doing 10 interviews a day. So I actually go and deliver more service than I get paid for. Mm. So that's something that I would recommend everybody do is uh, the amount of your check is dependent upon the amount of service that you produce and you can't out give the giver. So if you go and you have something that's working, I would say um, figure out the sub groups within the larger group and become friendly in that group and uh, be social on social. Um, become known, loved, and trusted. Um, moreover, become no liked and trusted. Likeability is cool, but lovability is better. And I think that if you learn to become loved in your subgenre or your show that you're focused on, and you start building relationships, say you're in comic books and you wanted to become like the comic book podcaster, go to a bunch of comic book seminars and sales like expos and start interviewing the people that are selling comic books and then yeah. you then you get a chance to interview the people that are writing comic books yeah well and what you're saying is so incredibly true so often we see people start a podcast and then they go to podcasting groups to build their audience and exactly what you're doing is the fastest way to grow it is to go who is my ideal audience? Where are they? And how can I get to know them? And instead of always be thinking, how do I get to know all of them at the same time, you're really reaching out and having conversations with individual people in groups. Uh, like you said, interviewing, I think that that's really valuable advice. Well, it's like, if you want to meet a bunch of people that cut hair and you're cutting hair, go to a place where they have, <laughs> you know, health and beauty expos. Yeah. And then you'll meet the designers and you'll meet the people that are releasing product brands. And then you'll meet the people that are the, the experts and the people that are speaking from the podium. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's how you build any, I would recommend that's how you build any network. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you go to those events, walk away with one person that you wowed them. Mm, that's so good. Again, it's just that individuality, I think just really sets people apart so often. Uh, you know, influencers or whomever, they're talking at everyone kind of at a broad stroke. But when you're really digging in, it, which really speaks to why having a target audience is so important because, you know, you are talking to a person versus well, a well, Tiffany, If there was like a young chiropractic student out there and they asked me what I could do, the one thing to like have an impact in my career, I would say, go find five chiropractors within the city that you want to go set up shop in and take them out for lunch mm -hmm. or buy them a cup of coffee and just ask them what worked for them. Yeah. How did they build their empire yeah. and become friendly with them? Because when you set up shop, those people are going to help you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a huge thing for people to know is that if you want to know something, take the people that know to lunch. Yep. A hundred percent. And someone who's already achieved it. I, I, again, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could talk about this for two hours. It's like one of my favorite topics. So I love it. And I feel like you're just crushing it. Um, so I want to kind of move into this next part. Um, I, you know, I, I'm kind of glossing over this whole social media thing. I, a lot of times I ask a lot more questions about like what you're doing on social media and your blog and things like that. I feel like your brand is on point. I encourage everybody to look up Cairo Hustle. Uh, I also think you do a really good job with social proof. In fact, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll tell you in a minute uh, more into more in depth about what I think you're doing really well. But when it comes to social, can you just really briefly though, before I just move right on, do you have like a set social media strategy and that's mapped out 
that gets executed for your podcast? Yeah, we release every Monday and Thursday um, consistently. And I have a micro content strategist that's on our team now that dices up everything and uh, creates stuff on Instagram. And he creates a, a bundle of images for me to use that we brand. So a lot is dependent upon me to post some of this stuff organically, but we do have a strategy where we release our shows um, every Monday and Thursday. Um, but yeah, I think that the more that you realize that um, brand awareness and uh, I mean, we have a, a photographer on our team on retainer. So it's not just the podcast, it's the components around it. It's the website, it's the production. It's building a team. And right now my campaign is to get on more shows. So, you know, knowing that people have buy-in to where they see what we create and how we produce, those people are gonna say, heck yeah, I wanna interview you. Not only do you produce a show, but you do a great job of content creation. Yeah. And wow, you're inspiring. Dude, Jim in the gym is hot. <laughs> like seeing you hike these mountains, you live in the most beautiful part of the world. I so want to be you, healthy like that. I want to yeah. live in the mountains. So they probably are projecting their own dreams and going, so tell me now what? <laughs> tell me about yeah. chiropractic. And, you know, yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. And again, how powerful it is to have a solid brand that's consistently out there. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to transition into the, like, let's talk about, I want to share some things that I think you're doing great, which I've already gone on about a lot of them, but, uh, and then some areas I see opportunity. And then my number one, like if I were the boss of the world, what I would tell you to do. Um, but before I do, is there anything else that you want to share that you feel would help be helpful in that audience growth piece that we haven't talked about yet? Um, I'll go back to an early thing that helped me rise, which was being social on social. Mm. I think that the reason they call it social media is not, it's me, me, me media. It's how can I have a conversation with somebody? And I would go back to what Russell Brunson teaches and tell people to create their dream 100, whether that's sponsors or whether that's interview people or whether that's alliances and create that dream 100 of those core groups and then figure out how to become social and social with them and then nurture them, do benevolence work, create goodwill campaigns around that. And the next thing you know, you are known, loved and trusted. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, cool. I, I love that. So um, now when I, when we talked about having you on the show, I promised you two things. I said, number one, I'd be prepared. And number two, that I would give you at least one actionable step that, that I believe will give you results in the next 30 days. So is that okay if we talk about that now? I need it. Okay. <laughs> Well, and I still want to hear from you. So this isn't one-sided. So, you know, definitely if you have questions and, and I'll, and we'll talk about it as we go, but um, let's see. So the, I, there are four P's to preeminence when it com comes to podcasting. Uh, number one is know your purpose, which, you know, with, when it comes to this show, Cairo Hustle, there is not like, it's beyond a re like beyond any doubt that you have a why, and it just screams throughout everything that you do. Uh, when you, when you're hustling, it's important that you're hustling in the right direction. And so I a hundred percent believe that that is the case here. Number two is know your people. Uh, who is it that you want to dial in? Who is it that you're having on your show? Make sure that your audience, audience messaging is speaking to the right people. Number three is optimizing the promotion of your show. So while there's all these things we could be doing, a lot of times I say as podcasters, we'll should all over ourselves that, you know, we even have our, our multiplication system, but sometimes it's better just to optimize what's happening because we're always budgeting our time and effort. So just optimizing that promotion. And number four is the, it's the proceeds or the profit. So some of us, we, you know, we, we make our money on our show and that's part of our profits. And some of, some of us are making proceeds so that we can put it just back into the podcast or into another effort. So, but without it, at the end of the day, it's hard to become preeminent without any resources to make it happen. 
So with that in mind, I always, I always start with that because I want to keep the main thing, the main thing. It's like, those are the things that we're going for. I believe that you are extremely strong at your blog. I love your blog because I feel like, first of all, it's got a lot of words. So SEO wise, it's brilliant. Talks about the, I know that they're interviews. Sometimes I'll go to a podcast site and I'm like, do you interview people? But your site, I could tell right away. Plus I knew that you did. So there's that, but I could tell, um, the, the blog post is written out uh, as an article. So it's value standalone without like someone could read it and still listen to the show and, and find value in it. So I really like your approach to that. Um, also, I mentioned your online videos. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of your Facebook videos. You've got a huge following on Facebook and that certainly is no accident. I remember seeing you go to Mexico and uh, be at that event. You were interviewing a ton of people. It was so fun to watch that as well. So um, I just think you are really the industry leader in that area. As far as being omnipresent, you are the definition of that for sure. Um, and then also, I think it's just impressive that you understand delegation and you do it. You don't wait or, you know, you think you have to have some special something happen and then you start delegating. You just get down to it. You're like, what should I be doing? It shouldn't be all this stuff. So you are really good at delegating. So, so Bravo. Those are amazing, huge things that you're good at. So yay, you and your team. And also I have to say, like you have a co-host real quick before I go on. Yeah. Uh, Luke Millette and I, uh, we are a team and uh, we, we've been producing the show since day one. So yeah, we have a co-host. Yeah. And now, so did, I, I, I honestly, I forgot to even, I should have like written this in right away, but I was listening in the bathroom, forgot to write it down, but I've just been curious. So does he, do you work, are you in the same agency? Is he a partner in the agency? How does he, like, he, did he have the same vision and, or were you like, wow, you're just really cool. And can you help me with this? Like what, usually one is the strength of the other. How did that partnership come together? Well, I'm reading a book right now by Gino Wickman called uh, Rocket Fuel. And uh, it's based on visionary and integrator. Mm. And I believe that we have a lot of overlap on both those topics, but my vision uh, within the chiropractic space was a uh, strong one and his ability to make sure that accounts receivable are getting done and that people are getting the contracts properly. Um, the business side of the podcast, he makes sure keeps moving like clockwork. Um, for me, it was, what is the vision? What is the brand? Who are we going to get? Like he's never had to go find one person to interview. Yeah. Um, he's never had to figure out who's one person that we're going to get as a sponsor. So we both have our leadership hats when it comes to our roles. And uh, yeah, we've been working together for over 10 years now and it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. So I just have to give him a, a you know, kudos also <laughs> in the meantime, as I'm going on about how amazing it is. So I know that it takes a team. And like I said, you delegate. So great job to your team as well. So uh, some areas that I see opportunity, the biggest ones, um, again, like everything's just about tweaking things. I mean, when you're, when you're getting amazing results, you always want to be, you know, measured about what kind of things you change and what kind of things you don't. Um, I would just say that number one, that audience promise. In fact, that's my, if I were the boss of the world, that's what it would be with just being really clear and, you know, spending some time and going, what is our audience promise? And then saying it somewhere in the beginning, because you do so much to drive people to your show. And as they're new, um, instead of the unique visitors, you know, being able to see that you have not unique visitors, like every time coming back, because they're, you know, they get it. If they listen long enough, it's not going to take them long to get it. But if you can really take that two to three minutes, that's just gold. That's where you grab a new visitor and turn them into loyal. So just really strategizing, how can you use that time to convert them right then into a listener and then throwing in that call to action. So like what you're talking about, potentially monetizing down the road, um, after you've gotten them as that loyal listener, using somewhere in your show to, you know, convert those people possibly down the road. But, um, and then also I would just, I mean, this is so minor. I just feel like there's so many things you're doing right, but with the additional, um, 
social media, one thing that when I go to your website, like I love it because it's you, it's like, it's so on brand. It's like, we're doing so many things. And these are all the people, like you highlight the people, you highlight what's great about them. Um, you've got your sponsors on there. You've got, um, it just looks like social proof, social proof, social proof all over the place. Um, but, and then you also, I love that you have your buttons up top for the social media. I would just say like update them. If you've got Instagram, I would add that. Cause a lot of people in your space, they're going to be on Instagram. So anything that you're doing, uh, if you don't like, I don't put Twitter on stuff, but we're on Twitter, but I don't care about Twitter that much. So I wouldn't put it on there, but if you are adding any channels that you feel like this is a legit channel that our ideal audience is going to be on, I would just make it really easy for them to find your show. The other thing now, let me just look at it again. I think that do you embed, I'm looking at it right now, but I know you embed your audio in here and you embed your video too. So it's like ideal. All the things I look for, you have like you're spot on with most of them, but could you imagine integrating an audience promise and having that capture more people that maybe wouldn't otherwise be exposed to your show and become loyal quicker? Well, I think that the reason that we need assessments like this is because we can't see our own blind spots. And the reason that it helps to have relationships with people in the similar space is because they can see things that we can't see. And I never look at, you know, somebody's uh, assessment as a, a negative. I look at it as a positive. So yeah, I think we could definitely drive home better when it comes to an audience promise. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, uh, start nurturing a better audience promise to where we can convert people um, actually to do business with us. Because you're right, we do a really 95% uh, amazing job when it comes to content creation and you know checking all the boxes. But yeah, we, we I, I've known this for a long time is we need to do a little bit better at uh, driving uh, a strategy to build business from the traffic. Hmm. Awesome. Well, good. Well, I'm glad that that, that is a helpful little tidbit. So, <laughs> and, and like I said, like you, you generally know, so it shouldn't be like a big project for you. It should be just like a, a tiny change, but I do feel really strongly that you're going to see a result over time. You're going to start seeing these people gravitate more. So, um, uh, and then before we go, I just want to tell listeners, as you are listening to this, I'm sure you're just like, oh my gosh, how do I find Jim? And if you're not, you should be his, uh, his show again is Cairo Hustle. So you can look it up on your favorite podcasting platform or go to www.cairohustle.com. He's got all the links, uh, most of the links, but he is on Instagram. So go look him up there as well. Uh, real quick, what's the name of your um, documentary too? If anyone wants to look that up. Well, our first film is called Chiropractic, the documentary. And our second film is called Project Patient. Um, and if people want those, reach out to me personally and I'll send you a link for both of them. Yeah. Or just let me know if you're listening to this and you just want to zip me a message, I can put you in touch with Jim as well, or just go to his website and just send him a message. So, um, Jim, thanks again so much for your time. I really appreciate you being here. Well, thank you, Tiffany, for the opportunity to share with your audience about what we're doing over here in the chiropractic world. Yeah. Was well, there anything else that you'd like to add before we go? Um, just want to get you on my new show, Influencer Authority, so we can, uh, you know, cross promote and backlink to each other. You got it. You got it. I will go to my message and uh, schedule that right after we get off this call for sure. So, hey, everybody, thanks so much for listening. Don't be average. Be brave. Take action and make magic happen. Thank you for listening.